quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 11 through 20. Now, what I am made of you today is not too difficult for you or beyond belief. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and to claim it to us so we can claim it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it proclaim it to us, so we may obey it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, and to keep His commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live, and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life, and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. people of God, this is the Word of God, and as we talk about this passage this morning and uh, move into the final segments of this series, uh, who would have thought that as we we're talking about the power of home, that the home would be such an incredibly familiar place to us uh, during this virus. People have been asked to stay in their homes and, uh, and not to go far from them. And there's great power in staying at home, and there's great power in uh, in being with those that we love so much. And uh, this morning, uh, we're going to finish by talking a lot about blessing. So, this passage this morning from Deuteronomy, Moses is coming to the end of his life. And he's been so integrally used by God in the life of God's people. And he gives this, this talk and he says, what's it going to be? Is it going to be life? Or is it going to be death? Is it going to be blessings? Or is it going to be curses? And the question comes for us today, too. Will it be life or death, blessings or curses? I mean, right now, we're in a situation where there are people walking around with hope, and there are people walking around with great fear. It's, it's a decision that the Lord puts before us. What are we going to choose? It is a choice for us. See, we're, we are not robots. We can hear God's word. We can learn God's will and decide either to obey or to disobey. They knew it then, and we know it today. Who would deliberately choose death when Moses gives that option? The choice is between trusting God and enjoying his blessings or turning to other things and experiencing the curses. Life and blessing, or death and curses. Moses is calling the people to accept God's grace, great opportunity to accept the covenant that has been established with them and enjoy the blessings. You know why God offers life? He offers life because He is life. See, we have life physically because the Lord has given us life. And we have life to the full because of the presence of Jesus in our life. So, we choose life and we choose blessing. We choose it and we are called to speak this life and to speak this blessings into the lives of others. And so, it's an appropriate message to give at the end of this series when we think about the power of home. I mean, think about it, folks. What would it be like if First Church 
In our church, our homes were all places of great blessing. What would it look like if our marriages were all marriages filled with great blessing? What would it look like if our relationships were filled with great blessings? In other words, when people saw us coming, they would see a blessing coming. They would see light coming. They would see hope coming because that's the message that's going to come off of our lips. This is who God was setting his people up to be. And it goes all the way back to Abraham. Through you, all nations will be blessed. Probably the greatest blessing that we can share with anyone else is the blessing to introduce them to Jesus Christ. After all, when people come to know Jesus, their best friend, and the very source of life. I mean, can it get any better than that? How do we make this happen? Well, Jesus answered this question in John 13, 34. He says this, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. All people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is not a new teaching to you. You know that we're called to love each other. But in being called to love each other, we're called to bless each other. That there are certain actions, certain things that describe that love. So what does it mean to us? Well, here's a common line. I used to use this in teaching. I can use this in church now. But people outside the church never care how much we know until they know that we care. Did you hear that? People outside the church don't care what we know unless they see that we care. And what does that care look like? Do we care for each other? Who wants to come into a church where the very church people are fighting? Who wants to go to somebody's home where their kids are fighting around the table and the mother and father are snapping back at each other? Nobody wants to be a part of that. And so, when it comes to people, are they not blessing? because they're uncaring? Or could it be that they lack knowledge of what it really means to be a person of blessing? Let's unpack that a little bit. What does it mean to give blessing? We see throughout the Bible this concept of blessing, this practice of blessing. So, I'm not an expert gardener by any means, but I have found that for a flower to grow, it needs five things. Soil, air, water, and light. And a secure place to grow. People might ask, well, what's a secure place to grow? Well, where its roots aren't continually being pulled out. How does a person grow? Well, there are five elements that when blended together, produce great fruit. Let me give you these five things and then we'll explain them. Meaningful touching. And then that continues with a spoken message of high value. And that continues with a message that pictures a special future for the individual being blessed. And that is based upon an active commitment to see the blessing come to pass. These are five things that everybody needs. So, when it comes to a family blessing, when it comes to the power of home and what needs to happen there, the first thing is appropriate, meaningful touch. Now, it's an amazing thing that I'm talking about, appropriate, meaningful touch, on a day where we're told to stay at least six feet apart, don't shake hands, don't hug, don't even give knuckles anymore. But believe me, what I'm saying, we're going to be able to return to soon. And it's very, very important in the family in particular. In the Bible, there was a time when Isaac, in the Old Testament, when he went to bless his son, here's what he said to his son. Come near and kiss me, my son. Now, we didn't do that so much in my own home when my boys were getting bigger. What we did is we gave big bear hugs. But whether it's kissing, whether it's hugging, whether it's laying uh, on the hands on another person, they were all a part of the stowing blessing in the Bible. We see it repeatedly. Look at 
at Jesus' example. This comes from Mark chapter 10. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place what? His hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant and he said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. In the Bible, there was a symbolic meaning to this touch, and there was also physical benefit from meaningful touch. What's the symbolic meaning? Well, there's a symbol of laying hands on someone that you are passing something to them. When a couple gets married, we'll come to the point in the marriage ceremony where I'll say to the couple, will you hold hands together as you say your vows to each other? And within that, something's happening. There's meaningful touch. If you've ever been in an airport and you've, you've seen people that are coming out of the gate area and there's family waiting for them, and you see these embraces that are going on, that's meaningful. Something's happening there. And then when you look at the physical ramifications of this, do you know that one-third of the million touch receptors are centered in our hands. That of our whole body, there's so much in our hands. There's a power in the hands that we have. And research continues to show the value of meaningful touch in our relationships, especially our relationships with our children. And meaningful touch always prepares the way for words. It's just not one thing, it leads into another. Jesus meaningfully touched the children. He touched the lepers. He touched so many others. And that set up another blessing that he was about to give them with words that he used. The meaningful touch always prepares this way. So, it prepares the way for a spoken message. Spoken message blessing is absent in a lot of homes. Many parents think that their presence communicates all the blessings that their kids need. I would submit not so. A blessing becomes a blessing when it is spoken. Silence communicates confusion. Spouses and children are left to fill in the blanks when things are not said. Abraham spoke a blessing to Isaac. Isaac spoke a blessing to Jacob. Jacob spoke blessings to his sons and his grandchildren. And when God gave his very son, Jesus, John 1 calls him the Word, and that the Word became flesh. This was blessing to us. And we can see from the book of James where James is talking about the power of the tongue. Well, the tongue can be used for bad things because it's so powerful, but it can also be used for blessing. James says, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Why don't people oftentimes use words of blessing? Well, some people will say, well, I don't want to inflate others, and that's why I hold back on that blessing. And sometimes people are afraid, well, if I bless them, maybe they won't finish their work well because they already think they're doing a good job and it's only half done. Hmm. Sometimes people don't bless because they just don't know what to say. They know that I love them and, um, and, 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 and that's enough. They just, they just know it. And then... Some people don't like the blessed because, you know, if I start doing that, I'm just going to have to continue to do that over and over again. So maybe I won't do that at all. Some people even say this. They say, 
uh, telling children their good points is like putting on perfume. A little is okay, but putting on too much stinks. Hmm. The most common reason that people have to get a blessing in their home is this one. I never received it, but why would I give it to somebody else? We need to speak the blessing. And then when we speak the blessing, what we do is we attach high value in there. So, what are the words that we use when we talk to others? They're words that, that, that assign that people are held in high regard, but they're very valuable. What does it mean to attach high value? Well, basically it means to attach honor. In Hebrew, the word blessed literally means to bow the knee. When Isaac blessed Jacob, here's what he said. Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. That is a word picture of high value. Although probably in our culture, we don't bless by making reference to people's smells. In Psalm 103, these words, My soul, bless the Lord and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. High value, honor. What we do when we say words of high value to others, we're saying, you matter. You're important. You're held in high regard. I think of the many volunteers that we always see here on Sunday mornings. People who watch here, people who greet, people who make coffee, people who are in the sound and tech booth, people who are playing instruments, people who are on the praise team, all sorts of people all over church and then throughout the week. They matter. They're important. They're held in high regard. We want to bless them. It's good to walk up to parents and say, you're a good parent. It's good to walk up to grandparents and say, you're a good grandparent. It's good to tell your wife she's a great wife. You're a great husband. You're an amazing son. You're an amazing daughter. Of all the daughters of the world, how did I end up with the best one? That's assigning high value. And to be able to walk around the people and to just say, you do a great job of what you do. I love the way you talk to people. I love the way you bless other people. These are things that come forth from our mouths. And then, accompanied with that, in our words that assign a special future. A blessing will always look to the preferred future of that person. Again, when Isaac was speaking to Jacob, he said, May God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. What beautiful words about the future. You know, we can look at people and say when they're dealing with hardship, we can say genuinely, you know, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. See, for the Christian, that's always an encouraging statement because sometimes somebody's on their deathbed and we can say the best is yet to come because truly the best heaven is about to come. Look at what it says in John 14. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. That's the best that's yet to come. God has great plans for every one of us. It doesn't matter whether we're 22 years old or 42 years old or 82 years old. The best is always yet to come. So I could look down at Lily and say, Lily, you're a child of promise. And I could look at her mom and say, Andy, you're a child of promise. God will use the magnificent gifts he has given to each of us to bless others. There's always a special future. And then... Finally, there's genuine commitment there. The last element of blessing pictures the responsibility that goes with giving the blessing. See, when we give the blessing, we depend upon the strength of the Lord to confirm that blessing in them. We stick with the people we bless. Through the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, we can live out that commitment. So when we speak these words to people, and we live in community with them, we can t- 
continue to pray for them. We continue to encourage them. We continue to push them into the Word of God. We continue to push them to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a commitment to them as a part of our community. We're going through an interesting season here, one like I don't think anybody has ever gone through before. We're called to do things, to stay in places, not to do different things, all because of a virus that's out there. And so, I didn't plan it this way, but really, I can think of no greater thing for us to learn than to learn this morning the power of blessing. To bless the people that you come in contact on a daily basis. Even in our own community, there are people who are perhaps going through some radical transitions, changes in their life because of the business climate. They need a blessing. People of God, be out there with your ears open. If you see a need, seek to fill it. If you see somebody down, seek to lift them up. Whether it's going through a drive through at a local place to eat or being at a gas station, there are going to be some people who are gripped with fear. They need a blessing. Every person out there has true worth. Let them know of their high value. And within our church body, too, I've encouraged you all week as I email to you, see people that, for instance, in our senior facilities, send them in Send them a card. If you can call them, call them. Write them a note. Let them know that they're valuable. Let them know that they're not forgotten. Let them know that they're special. Don't assume anything. Bless, bless, bless. Help people be filled with hope and encouragement to reach their full potential. When I hear Mike's story this morning, the story of Mike can be the story of any other young person in our church. Because people came around him and they poured into him. And we got to hear more of Mike's testimony this weekend. But at times when kids are going away that maybe they shouldn't be behaving that way. And maybe they're not doing the things that they're supposed to. For people to have that commitment to stick with them. To believe in the power of God over them and keep praying for them and encouraging them and assigning high value to them. What happens? Look at how God is faithful in his life, and we'll see this in the lives of our kids as well. So pour into people and bless them. Commit to being there for people and not walking away. I can't begin to tell you how exciting it is to be a part of a church that's already there seeking to bless people and we have a whole lot to grow in as well. This is a type of church, this is a type of community that people want to belong to. A great place of blessing. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we want to bless your name. And we thank you for being a great God. We thank you, Lord, for the words of encouragement and love that we have throughout the scriptures that you point us to. We're grateful that we belong. We're grateful that in spite of our sin, that you have redeemed us and that you have lifted us up. And you called us to now take that blessing and to go and bless others. So help us to be that church. Help us to be those families. Fathers, Lord, we pray for our fathers in our church that they would bless their wives and that they would bless their children. That they would speak words to them that would go deep in their hearts. And we pray, Lord, that when once again people flood through the doors of this church, that from the moment that they get out of the car, that they can realize that this is a place of blessing because the Spirit of the Lord is here and working in the hearts and lives of so many. We love you. We thank you for guiding us through this whole series. Make us strong because of your power that is in us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.